So now in this video, we're going to use the 555 timer again. This is actually a pretty uh, simple circuit, but a pretty cool one as well. We're going to use uh, touch to control the output of the 555 timer. So the output is high, that means it connects as close to 5 volts as it can. Not uh, terribly well, but uh, you know, decently well. And uh, then the red LED is going to light up. You can see that current path there. When the output's low, then it's connected to ground, which it does actually really well. And uh, so we'll have current path going through there, and the blue LED will light up. I'm using a higher value 1000 ohm for the blue LED because it's naturally brighter than the red LED. So we're going to put less current through it so that their brightnesses are about equal, 220 ohms for the red LED. We'll see that over there. I use this in a lot of my circuits. I'm not going to go over it in great detail. So in any case, what we have, we have the... Uh, trigger right here you can see the uh, names up there trigger pin number two is waiting for a low input for it to set the output high five volt that's what it is so we are going to hold it high that's going to tell it not to do anything one million ohm resistor we want a high value resistor because my body's not going to produce much voltage so this will just barely hold it on. We can actually go a lot higher in resistance. But in any case, 1 million ohm works. 100,000 did not. I could not trigger this with 100,000. So, in any case, I'll touch the actual resistor, but we could have a wire going to a metal pad or, or anything. You know, just metal to metal, basically, coming to two. When I touch it, you're going to see that if the output's low, it will go high. Then we have the threshold pin right there. Threshold. So, that is waiting for a high input. So we have a resistor holding it low, zero volts, right there. Until my body, which is picking up electromagnetic waves from the wiring, from the household and whatnot, my body touches that, it'll have brief periods of time where the output will be over two thirds of the supply voltage. So higher input there, sets the output low. And uh, so it's bi-stable though, so it stays in whatever state I switch it to until I switch it into the next state. So it's pretty forward. Um, we need to power the integrated circuit. So positive supply goes to VCC. Negative side of the supply, ground in this case, goes to uh, pin number one, the uh, ground pin. We're using the trigger, the output. So output is pin three, and we're using threshold to six. Control would change the uh, voltages that. Uh, these two pins respond at, but we're not going to worry about that. Sometimes you'll see a capacitor going to ground, and uh, we don't discharge anything. There's no timing or uh, whatnot. So pin 7 will just leave uh, floating, and we don't want to reset this. And uh, so, again, pin 4 is also waiting for a low input, like pin 2, before it does anything. We go to 5 volts, we can go directly, then it does nothing. So this is a simple circuit. I thought I would explain that stuff a little bit more. So we uh i'll turn the uh, power on there i got the uh, power supply and by the way again this is a simple circuit i'll explain things more we got alligator clips coming out from the uh, power supply there and uh, there's the other end of the alligator clips and there's these little things that plug into the breadboard they got wires coming out the top as well and i just clip them there and so i only got the negative side here plugged into the power supply a black wire also connects that side over there yeah, same with the red we got uh, moving across so let's move into the uh, circuit and there we have again we power it pin 8 positive pin 1 uh, negative there 1 million ohms coming from uh, the th uh, trigger there to the positive supply to keep it from doing anything and uh, pin 6 we got going to the negative side of supply 1 million ohms remember these have to be high values don't have to be a million could be higher but uh, definitely not 100,000, did not work. And there we have our output. Output coming to the two LEDs, and uh, that's the short lead for the blue one, long lead to the one kilo ohm to positive, and then we got the output to the uh, long lead of the red LED, short lead headed towards the negative through a 220. And uh, there you can see that uh, when I touch them, then it will switch. Again, we don't have to touch the resistors directly in this case I can have metal uh, going anywhere so now actually I'm in the wrong one but uh, there you can see we switched it there and maybe 
there's enough going through the uh, plastic there. Yeah, even through the plastic. I didn't have to touch the metal yet, but we were able to switch it. And uh, here's another thing we can do. If we connect them directly together, and you would need an oscilloscope to actually uh, see what's going on, maybe I'll do that in another video. But uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, buy stable. So I'm in the wrong pin there. I'm looking through the camera. So you see the blue LED lit up right now. And now they're actually alternating back and forth really fast. And it uh, looks like it maybe will prefer the blue LED. But uh, I would think that there's a chance that uh, the red one might uh, turn on once in a while. But for some reason it prefers the uh, blue. Maybe because it's picking up signals as an antenna as well. But in uh, any case, hopefully you found that interesting. Main thing, again, is that uh, we're just using touch. There's a lot of uh, touch circuits out there. And that's basically the uh, principles that it's applied there is that I'm actually creating alternating voltage because of the alternating current around me hitting me with electromagnetic waves. It's really weak though. As you can see, we needed 1 million ohm resistors so that I can overcome the voltage that they're already uh, bringing in, but it is enough to influence electronics. Some point, maybe you'll even be working on electronics, you're touching it. If it's sensitive, might make it do stuff it's not supposed to. You might have to uh, overcome that with uh, lower value pull resistors, pull up or pull down. But in any case, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.